Hello and thank you for asking me here today for your expert Q&A. My name is Georgina Heffernan and I'm a former journalist turned marketing professional with 15 years of experience in the media. So today I'm going to be answering a variety of questions around demographic targeting and A-B testing. So what is meant by demographic targeting? Well, to start, we need to look at the definition of demographic targeting and basically it is the study of human populations. So demographics are typical traits and qualities that characterize a person or a group of people. And so as marketeers, how we sort of look at those figures is to look at the people in different groups by age, gender, race, nationality, things like um, parental status, marital status, and the location that they live, the city, state, or the country. So that's a really good place to start when you're talking about demographics. So this kind of information can be efficiently segmented into different markets, helping brands that target customers more precisely than ever before. And very often, digital marketeers will combine a number of various data points in order to be able to clearly define the demographic profile of the customer that they really want to reach. So the consumer profile that marketeers develop will need to include particular information about a given group of people, allowing marketing analysts to create an image of what the average customer looks like in that particular segment. For example, marketeers may want to target women who are new mothers in order to be able to sell products to her that reflect her new interests and her new status. For example, you wouldn't want to waste money advertising baby products to young teenage boys because they're just not interested in baby strollers. So because they're not parents, nor would be interested in a product like that, you are basically targeting your advertising spend directly to the people that are most interested in the products that you are promoting. Using the tools available on platforms, such as Facebook or Instagram ads, for example, you can target your ideal customer by their interests, and you can even drill down to a particular city, region, or town. Ultimately, demographic targeting allows for more tailored messages, better leads, increased loyalty, and customizable bids. It also helps you avoid wasting money on ineffective advertising campaigns by making sure that your ad is only seen by the people that are most interested in your product. So, will members of similar demographic groupings respond in the same way to a particular social media component? For example, if you are selling sports equipment and you have identified two different target groups, Group A are 20 something year old guys and group B are men in their 60s. You wouldn't use the same copy or the same text for both of these audiences because they, they have different interests and they're at a different life stage. The reason is that you need to speak to them with images and texts that are in their own voice. You need to put yourself in the shoes of the person that you are marketing to and ask yourself this. If your product is the answer, what was the question? If you use this method as a way to work backwards and you can then design your copy and your marketing material from there. You'll also need to think very carefully about the images you use. If you want to target, say, a 55-year-old man who's interested in getting fit, you'll need to choose an image that is like them and that will speak to them specifically not a generic picture of a model or stock imagery that's old and tired. You don't want to use things that are designed to appeal to a general audience when you're trying to talk to one particular audience or member of your demographic. A skilled marketeer will know how to elicit different emotional responses from the marketing communication that they put out. And this is where your copy and your imagery must work together in order to create the desired response. A company must shape how customers think and feel about their product. By creating the right experience, customers can have specific feelings, thoughts, or perceptions about a brand. So how can we account for or respond to those differences? Well, the reason why there are differences 
is that a marketing message for one product can evolve depending on who is making it and who it's for. For an advert to succeed, it does not have to be aesthetically pleasing in the traditional sense, but it is vital that it appeals to the targeted audience. Remember, an image used in marketing design should always strike a chord with the market that it is communicating with. Images for marketing are often guided by the text in the advert. It is important that the text and the image combined reflect the philosophy of your brand. So what do we mean by A-B testing? A-B testing, which is also known as split testing or bucket testing, is a method of comparing two versions of a marketing communication against each other to determine which one performs better. This version of testing can be used in testing websites, apps, and a variety of other digital products. Your campaign should continue over a set period of time, say seven days, with your different advert varieties delivered in equal numbers at the same time of day. If you want to get a broad and clear picture of what works best, A-B testing should not be regarded as a once-off activity, but something that you do regularly. People and trends can vary, so run routine checks to test your results for each new launch or each new product. Continue testing on a constant basis. And remember that not every test will work. Be ready to start again if you don't get a conclusive response. So does that mean only testing two components against each other? Well, no, you can test a variety of components to see what works best for your advertisement. Testing lets you know what words, phrases, you know, visuals or graphics will elicit the best response from your target. You know, even the most modest changes can impact conversion rates. If a minor change can get somebody to click, you'll want to know what other elements of your advertisement, for example, might have an impact on conversions, traffic to websites or signups. So some examples where A-B testing could prove useful include the following e-newsletters, email marketing campaigns, websites, mobile applications, or internet advertising such as banner, pay-per-click, or AdWords. The sort of variables you might want to test are comprehensive and they include many aspects such as the following. Subject lines and subtitles, things like product descriptions, your text, the length and style for it, your offers and your price. Are you using images or video? Your call to action button. What is the text? What is the color? What is the position? Your color schemes and your fonts and your page layouts. So I've talked a lot about A-B testing, but just how effective is it? So A-B testing has a multitude of benefits to a marketing team. And that really is depending on what it is you want to test, be it an app or a website. Above all though, these tests are important to a business because they're low on cost and they're high on reward. And they will ensure that you're not putting money behind a website or an advert that won't perform well. This type of testing can also make a tremendous difference in the effectiveness of your marketing efforts. And that's because you will minimize risk by choosing the type of content that really works. Narrowing down the most powerful components of a promotion and then combining them can obviously make your marketing efforts much more successful and profitable. Here we have some great examples of A-B testing to show you how this works in reality. So check out the next slide and we'll see you on the other side. So, should you A-B test all of your social media components? Well, for general heartbeat content, such as the type of posts that you'd put up on a daily basis, that's not really necessary. But it is necessary to A-B test paid social campaigns and advertisements. For that type of stuff, it's vital. With A-B testing, you can distinguish two different varieties for a specific social media campaign, and then post your information to a small percentage of that complete audience. 
so half of the test group is sent message A and the other half is sent message B. The most successful message is defined by metrics like clicks or visits to a website. Then the most successful version of the message will be sent to the other half of your audience. Social A-B testing answers questions like, what communication is the most appealing to your audience? What social content types produce the most action? And what time of day are people online and connecting with your content? So which call to action is the one that gets people to visit your website, sign up to your mailing list, or even make a sale? Or whatever that success metric means for you. So do mobile or desktop users respond best to your social ads? And which platform is getting the best results for your brand? Remember that there are three main components that are usually tested. The most important bin, the graphics, text, and images that you have chosen for your campaign. You need to test these in order to determine what images contribute or deter from engagement and conversion. Does a still life image work best? Or does an image of a product being used get the most clicks and likes? The next most important part of the picture is your copy or the text you will be using in your advertisement. Here you need to check your post's title, its readability, its word count and its description while also factoring in how your audience engages with your social media. Consider the following. Keep it short and sweet because it's no secret that people's attention spans are short these days. Also, show your personality because we all know that corporate writing can be very dull. Remember to make it actionable so that the person looking at your ad has been directed to do something. Complement the visual with your text so that they match together and they look great. Use hashtags and emojis in the right way. While variables may differ from network to network, you should still test the layout of your advertisement. For example, Facebook ads gives you a whole variety of different templates to use, like carousel ads or lead ads. So it's worth testing the one that is most effective. When we're talking about layouts, we can look at the main platforms like Facebook and Instagram who offer really great templates, such as lead ads or carousel ads. It's worthwhile testing these particular varieties against each other to see what works best. This all sounds really complicated to implement, I know. So you're probably asking yourself what tools are available to help a marketeer um, test their A-B components for their ads. Well, the great news is that we have compiled a list of resources in the next slide. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope that you found all of these tips helpful.